It's March 16th, 2020, and this whole COVID-19 situation is rapidly changing. This video might not be even relevant in a couple days, but I felt it was really important as a physician to get this point across as early as possible. I'm scrolling through social media and I'm seeing posts like this and posts like this. This is Clearwater Beach here. And posts like this. What the f And I think the problem lies in that people think, oh, I'm young, I'm healthy, it's just gonna be bad flu. I'm gonna be fine. View this the same as the flu. Or they think, well, I'm just gonna get it anyway. What's the point of even isolating myself if it's inevitable? The problem is it's not about you. It's about the vulnerable people that if they contract this virus, they will die. Statistically, you who is watching this video, you are not going to die. Statistically, the vast majority of people will live through this. But the problem is, is that based on current numbers now, three to 4% won't live, and that's an issue. So you've probably heard about things like flattening the curve and social distancing, but that's not just to protect you, that's to prevent this from spreading as fast as it is. And the thing that boggles my mind right now is that we can actually look at other countries that have already gone through this, China, Italy, and realize that we are on the exact same path as they were on. We are less than two weeks behind Italy and their healthcare system is crumbling under the pressure that COVID-19 is putting on it. There are literally doctors like myself who are having to choose who gets life-saving care and who doesn't. And that terrifies me, that absolutely terrifies me. Physician or not, having to choose who lives or who dies is a nightmare. If everybody gets sick all at once, a certain percentage of people will require mechanical ventilation or ICU level critical care beds. We don't have an unlimited number of those things. So if everybody gets sick all at once and there's a spike of patients that come through, there's going to be a certain number of beds and as soon as we hit that number, everybody else dies. There's no other way to put it. If we through social distancing and isolation can actually slow down the transmission of the virus, we can actually have somewhat of a hope of tackling this problem and being able to save as many lives as possible given that we have a certain limitation on the resources. So the Washington Post made a simplified model of how transmission of disease works and they just represented people by these little dots. And these dots are pinging around. You can see how fast the virus spreads. And while this model is not a perfect representation of how this virus spreads, it does illustrate one really good point. And that first point is that this virus spreads rapidly when there's no intervention. The second point, however, is that when we stop some of these dots from moving around, you can see how much slower the virus propagates. And you can actually plot a curve over time that shows the transmission of this disease. And you can see how much flatter this curve is when there is social distancing practices enacted. And that's the key here, because once we hit that critical threshold and we fill up all the critical care beds that are available to us, that's when deaths start happening. And that's when physicians are start having to make these crazy, insane decisions on who gets life-saving care and who doesn't. And I really feel for our brothers and sisters in the healthcare system in Italy right now who are actually having to make those decisions as we speak. So this issue clicked for me a couple weeks ago and I realized we are barreling towards a crisis. And the frustrating thing is, I don't think everybody sees it. I know some people do and that's great, but when I see images of people out partying in large groups, I can't help but think, what are you doing? This is literally preventable if everybody just got the message. This isn't meant to scare you. It's, I know this is a very serious video, which is a bit off of our normal brand, but I think it's important to get this across. You know, anytime we make recommendations, there's always gonna be a risk versus reward analysis that we have to look at. And in this case, the risk is, is, your, is your mental health and well-being. You know, social isolation is taxing and it can be harmful for some people. People. Only you can make a decision on where you draw the line, which what you think is appropriate and what's not. There are some essential services that have to go on. Again, as a physician, I have to go do my job. Now we have canceled all of our elective cases and we're continuing to do the life-saving therapies that we need to do. So what does that mean for the general public? Well, it just means making smart decisions. Obviously you have to go out and get groceries. Maybe it means avoiding peak time that you're going out, or maybe it means getting more groceries at once to minimize the trips to the store. As far as recreation is concerned, do you need to go to the movies? I would avoid the movies. There's a large amount of people packed into a small space. That's situations you want to avoid. I would avoid the situations that you saw at the beginning of this video. Avoid large crowds packed into small spaces. For somebody like myself who's working in what's considered an essential service, it's an easy decision for me to make because I have to go to work and provide those essential services. It's actually a harder situation for people who are working out in the community, which 
may not be considered quote unquote essential services, but are feeling the pressure to either not go to work or distance themselves socially. And I get it, it's tough, but only you can make that decision. But I would advise you to make smart decisions and realize that the only way we're going to be able to flatten that curve out is if everybody's on the same page and is making responsible choices. The complicating factor to this, and a lot of people have a problem accepting that this is a crisis because life appears normal. You're not seeing a whole bunch of sick people. This isn't like some zombie or post-apocalyptic film where things, going, things are going crazy. Life just appears normal as is. Not to mention the fact that friends of yours, family of yours that are infected may not show symptoms for anywhere from two to 14 days. So that actually can create this scenario where they're infectious and they can spread the virus, but they don't look unwell. So that's why people say if you've been traveling abroad in a high risk zone, self quarantine yourself for 14 days until you know you're not infected. In the end of the day, this is the only point I wanted to get across is that we're at a critical point now where we can actually change this if we all work together. And I know a lot of people will say that I'm overreacting and that, oh, it's not such a big deal, but I would just ask you to look at the countries who have already been through this, who are going through it now, like Italy. That's literally a crystal ball to look into the future. I. I don't see how people don't realize that this is exactly where we're heading. And the only difference is we have a chance right now to act and to do the responsible thing and make a difference. And ultimately, in the end of the day, if we end up doing too much and we inconvenience ourselves, well, so be it. At least we avoided a crisis. But if we do too little and we don't slow this down, we will have friends and family that die. And that's just the reality of it. So before we end this video, a couple quick rapid fire recommendations. Wash your hands often avoid touching your face, avoid sick contacts, obviously. If you're sick yourself, stay at home. Avoid hoarding things like toilet paper, hand sanitizer, soap. Everybody in your community needs these items to stay healthy and ultimately keep you healthy. And finally, avoid buying or even stealing masks from the hospital. There's actually a shortage uh, of masks for healthcare professionals, which is just absolutely crazy. So unless you're sick, you don't need a mask. So this video isn't meant to scare you. It's not meant to create anxiety. I just wanted to address a lot of what I would call irresponsible behavior that I've been seeing online and for people to realize that this isn't just a flu.